Hello, and welcome to tutorial 7 of the second series of the Game Guru tutorial series. Um, in this one, we're going to just look at how models can be created in Blender 2.8 and imported into Game Guru. Now, I must point out uh, before we begin that it, can, it takes a very long time to become adept at 3D modeling and animation. This tutorial is simply an introduction to the steps required to create a very simple model and have that model in Game Guru. Um, you can then take this as a foundation to further build upon those skills. That being said, we shall now create a simple model, um, un unwrap the texture and import it into Game Guru with a basic solid colour. So, um, first to create an object you can uh, add a mesh and let's say we'll add a cube click and it appears in your scene you can go into edit mode select polygons and then press the N key to bring up the um, transform panel and set the Z to 0 that moves this plane onto a zero on the Z plane, making it effectively sitting on the floor. Um, if I take this one and move it to two, I've created a cube which is now two meters square. And um, this will be the foundation of the object I'm going to make. I'm going to just do some random shapes pulling from it. So you have an extrude tool where you can click and then drag to create extra polygons in a certain direction. You have, have the um, insert faces tool where you can create an additional fa additional faces on a face which can be moved wherever you see fit. You can move that back and extrude it out to create a, a sort of indented thing. Um, on this side Let's say we extrude that out, and there's a bevel tool which will um, kind of create a chamfer or a bevel on the edges. Um, this can be done on surfaces, it can also be done with the individual edges, so you can just kind of create more definition to a curve. Um, so there's lots to do. I mean, it's a very good skill to learn. Um, but it's a hard skill to master. Um, but with any skill worth doing, it just takes practice. No one was born being a very good 3D modeler. And it takes dedication, patience, and you need to know what it is that you want to do. And sometimes you have to fight the controls to get where you want to go. And we'll pop that at Z plane zero, so it's like a foot. So this is um, an odd looking shape. Yeah, okay, we'll have that. Um, you can of course uh, press tab to cycle between object mode and edit mode. Um, so now we've got a shape, um, an odd shape, but a shape nonetheless. If you go to UV editing, and then if you select all, you can see um, a network, a mesh here on the left hand side. Now that was the UV map from the original square, which obviously has changed now. If you go to UV and unwrap, it will attempt to um, unwrap the shape in the smartest way it can, but there are no seams in this mesh, um, so it won't be very good. In fact, it's not anything at all. Now, if you go to edge mode, and let's say this edge, and then select an area you want to separate from everything else. You can hold down shift um, to select multiple things, by the way, or oh, to deselect things, like so. And if you go to mesh, um, edge, and uh, mark seam, it gets a sort of deep orange border, like so. So this time, when you unwrap the mesh, you can see down here, 
this area of the mesh, um, this area of the mesh is what you cut away from making those seams. Now, if you repeat that process um, intelligently throughout your entire model, you can break it down into um, swatches or areas of polygons, which can then be individually um, textured. So I shall do that now. Um, bearing in mind, I'm being very quick here and I'm cutting several corners. I perhaps shouldn't be cutting because I just want to get something into the engine in the time frame. Uh, so you'd spend hours um, on even a simple model like this on the modeling, um, sculpting, texturing. It's not a quick thing. What it is good for, which I found in the past, is it's good for prototyping. Um, prototyping things that you want to include in your scene, but you may not actually have a model for that right now. For example, if you wanted to have a bridge, a specific type of bridge, but you do not have that specific type of bridge in your um, archive, you could just create a rough of it like this, have it in your scene, until you can either spend the time to make it or buy it from some sort of asset store. Now, if we cut these corners like this, but before I do that, I press A to select everything, and then unwrap again, oops, and then unwrap again, you can see the swatches I've just cut out are represented here, more neater, but this, is this bit here. I'm not sure my mouse is showing up on these videos, but this bit is this bit over here. And you see it highlighting. And it's not very nicely unwrapped. What we can do, set the edge mode and get the edges like this. And if you mark those seams and then select it all and unwrap it, um, it's still connected to something here, whatever that is. So there it is, that one, mark that seam, select it all, unwrap it, and now nah, that's much nicer, it's straighter edges. It's, but no, this isn't nice. I suspect that is uh, that. So we can go up in here. We can select these edges. Now, I want to take this point, uh, chance to say, this is one way of doing it. There's lots of different ways of doing these things. I'm just showing a very quick way of prototyping to get something in the engine. You could reasonably expect to spend hours just on one simple model. This here, um, this clump of things, is this pillar over here. I'm going to split that now. Um, you could spend a long time um, on a single model. Indeed you should, because the longer you spend on something, the better it will eventually be. Now, there is quicker ways to do this. But I'm just doing it individually so you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'd just be showing you the results. And that's less useful. Although, it would be slightly easier. Okay. A, trip, a trick for this one is this. While you can simply hold down the shift button and to select individual edges, sometimes they're in small nooks and crannies so that it makes them very hard to select individually. What you can do is select one edge, hold down the control key and select another edge and it will calculate the shortest path from point A 
to point B. Now, in this case, it's gone all around the edge exactly like I wanted it to. I can then go to Edge and mark that seam. And I can repeat the process with these. So I'll click the first one, hold down Control, click the second one. Indeed, I can even hold down Shift, click that one, hold down Control, and click that one, and it picks the shortest path between that, and so on, and so forth. I can mark those seams. Now, take an extra care as well. Mark sharp and mark seam do very different things. You've got to be careful for clicking one and not the other. Um, we're going to cut that off as well. So, right, highlight this bottom thing. Highlight this bottom thing as well. Sometimes I let go of shift. Or I could have selected the face. Edge, mark a seam. Now this time, when I unwrap, it's a lot more laid out. There's no odd angles. Well, this is an odd angle, but that's forgivable. I believe that is this bit here, where that is. Um, but that's okay for now. I don't mind. That is a basically unwrapped shape in Blender. We can save that now by going to File and save as and we'll call it um, box shape one save as blender file now i want to save as blender file because we always want to come back and edit this or change it if you wanted to uh, but also while we're here we're going to file export fbx and we'll call that also box shape one export fbx now, what I have done as well, I have created a blank um, texture. This is a basic 1024 squared canvas with a kind of a mucky orange color on. And that's what I'm going to use to apply to the model, just to get some material information on there. That is by no means its final texture. Um, it's just something to put on there, just to show you the process of putting something on there. So in Blender, go to Object Mode, and make sure it's selected, and there's an icon down here. It looks like a small globe, a small checkered circle. Give that a click, and pick New. And you can call it um, Box Shape um, Texture, and under Base Color, this little circle, give that a click and choose image texture. And then you'll see something's appeared here, um, new and open. But that's because previously the base color was a flat color, but now we're telling it, don't use a flat color, use a texture that I'm going to provide for you. Now you can select new and have Blender deal with it, but we've already got a texture here, so I'm gonna open. And I've got blank color.png. It's in the folder I created for this. So if I select that and open image, it applies that texture to this object. Now you might be asking again, I can't see it. Where, where is it? Well, up here, Blender has the view modes, wireframe, flat shading, and material mode. If I click this, this kind of odd green color is the texture I've just applied to it. Um, so I'm going to save that again. And I'm going to export it again as the FBX. Because I want it to export with that material information. Now, if I go back to Game Guru and in Game Guru, I will go to File, um, Import Model, and go to my user directory my blender imp and select my box shape one dot fbx open now as before with the crate from the previous video it will load the fbx and turn it into a dbo except this time you'll notice it's textured already that's because in blender i expressly told that this fbx file had this material 
Now, game gurus saw that this material existed in the um, the folder and applied it automatically. So that's one less thing I have to do. You'll also notice that um, there's no extra PBI textures, and that's quite simply because there are no extra PBI textures. This is a flat color. I just wanted to show the process of exporting from Blender and importing to Game Guru is actually quite straightforward. Um, make sure wire rotation is zero. You can spin it around to have a look at it, but whatever orientation you select will export with the model. So if you export it like this, it will always be 50 degrees askew. So make sure that's zero if you're going to spin. Uh, box collision is fine. Material doesn't matter, generic, and just save entity. Now that will save it in Blender Imp as box create one. Now even though box create one isn't what the thing was called, the um, model, it doesn't matter. This is a, for all intents and purposes, its own name. Add entity, now go to the user directory, Blender Imp, and there it is, box create one. Click it, and there is the model from Blender in Game Guru. The normals are messed up, the shade is messed up, the texture is very basic, but that is because I didn't do anything in Blender. This is just a quick create, unwrap, texture, export, import. Here it is. Um, you would spend a lot longer working in Blender on your own things. Um, I mean, you've seen this video maybe 10 minutes to make this together. I've been known to spend hours making just one model, um, but the more time you put into it, the more time you get out of it. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile learning, but it's a hard road, but a rewarding one. Um, if you did want to learn more about Blender, there is lots of tutorials already in existence about Blender, especially 2.8. Um, so I won't go into Blender here. Um, that would be like reinventing the wheel. I just wanted to address the basic principles of creating something in Blender and then getting it into Game Guru. It is as simple as that. So on that score, I'm going to stop the video. If you have any questions, are you open to go over something else specifically? Please let me know. I will go over it. But until then, I shall thank you for watching and see you next time.